Hey everyone, welcome to today's video and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a real time get ready with me for a date. Tonight I'm going on a date date night, I guess, and before we get into it, yes, when I do my makeup, I will be moving closer to the camera. I feel like that's a thing recently where you guys have been like, Emily, can you just like move the camera closer? So yes, we will be. But before I get into my makeup, I am gonna be popping some bits of my hair. So we're starting here. Just to give you a bit of context, this part of the video is sponsored by L'Oreal. I just washed my hair with Dream Lens, obviously. I was gonna get the ones out of my shower and I was like, that's, that's kind of gross uh, because they are so wet. So I got a new set out. Now, as you know, I was actually the face of Dream Lens for the campaign a while back, which is crazy. And it's still something that stays in my shower. I obviously alternate my shampoo and conditioner, but I always use this one. So it'll be, I use this one, then I switch something new in and out. But this is the baby that always stays. So I have just used this. And this is part of their long hair do care campaign, which is something they're running in October. And I don't know about you, but I'm someone that uses quite a bit of heat on my hair. Not necessarily when it comes to like drying it, more just styling it. So I am gonna be curling to like my hair today. So I thought this was a great, great time to kind of mention the campaign. So I'm just popping in some of the no haircut cream. And this is something that I use, especially when I'm gonna be popping heat on my hair. You can use it after every wash if you want. But basically it does pretty much what it says on the tin. It strengthens your hair, reduces the appearance of split ends. And it's something that I particularly like to use when I'm using heat on my hair because it protects your hair up to 180 degrees from heat. So it is a great one to use. And yeah, I pretty much just run it through the ends of my hair like that, super simple. I guess you use it in the same kind of way that you would use like a leave-in conditioner, but it has added benefits in the heat protection and obviously getting rid of the appearance of split ends, which is a massive thing for me because I hate getting my hair cut. I find it like a traumatic experience. Like, let me know in the comments if you feel like that as well. But like, I just feel like emotionally damaged whenever I get my hair cut, I'm like, oh, my baby, where's it gone? I'm actually not gonna use a hairdryer on my head just yet. I'm gonna let it air dry whilst I do my makeup, but I like to apply the no haircut cream whilst my hair's still a little bit damp, which is why I wanted to do that first. Okay, so we're all up close and personal. And it is at this point that I do just wanna say, I'm really sorry if the lighting goes a bit weird. It is that time of year where I have to film with studio lights because it gets really dark really early, which is just a problem. Uh, I know like most of you watching this probably really don't care and I probably care way more about how my video looks than you do. You probably just want to see me do my makeup and just chill and chat. So I'll shut up. But yeah, if you like videos like this, please do give it a massive thumbs up. It's always a really nice help to me. Like if you leave me a comment or if you give the video a thumbs up so I know whether to do similar things like this in the future or not. So that would be really cool. I've got my cup of tea, which I don't know about you, but whenever I get ready, I always have to have like a drink, whether it be like a hot chocolate cup of tea or like, I don't know, anything. I love a good cup of tea though. Also dealing with a little friend on the forehead, which actually looks like a lump. Can you see that if I turn to the side? I haven't touched it. Uh, it's just been growing over the last three days. So I'm hoping I wake up tomorrow and it's miraculously gone, but it like, it's like a lump, it really hurts. All right, the hair is up. So let's start with some primer. This is the Infallible Mattifying Primer. So I did ask out for some questions on Instagram just to answer whilst I was getting ready. Just thought it'd be really nice. So the first question is, how's life right now? And life is great, life is busy. I'm like here, there and everywhere as usual, which I love, I wouldn't change that like at all. But it's been like a bit of an intense time. Like I was back in London when I got up from Australia for like a week. No, 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 two weeks. It was 13 days in the end. Also, I'm back into my 3N true match. Uh, my tan is fading and I'm not accepting that I need to fake tan just yet. So we're back onto 3N. I was on like 4DW, which is like darker. But yeah, as you can see, this is like my color again, which is so sad. It's so sad that summer's nearly over. Like, so yeah, I was in, in Australia. I came home, which was amazing. If you haven't seen my Australia vlog, I will link that down below for you. That was like incredible, such a fun trip. So nice to see my friend Ella, who is from Sydney. She flew to Brisbane. Oh my gosh, I've got another spot. She flew to Brisbane to see us, which was just the nicest thing because I didn't actually have time to fly to her, even though that was what I wanted to do. So that was amazing. And then, yeah, I got home. I was in London for like two weeks, got so much done. And then I flew to LA for like a week 
I was, yeah, I was there for a week and then I got back on Monday and today is Thursday. So I've been like back now for like four days. I don't plan, wow, my skin tone's really uneven because of this weather. My, as in, sorry, my skin texture. It's just very, you probably can't see, but it's very, ugh. I love how that's not covered the spot on my forehead in the slightest. I'm gonna be using the Infallible More Than Concealer to do that. So yeah, I plan on being at home for a while. I want to go and spend some time with my family, with my doggo. I just want to be in the same place for a while. I don't have any plans to travel until November, which is <laughs> soon like a week, but my travel plans aren't until like, I think like two weeks, so that's nice. I have so much to do though. Like, you know when you like get busy with things and you don't actually get stuff done and then like, you just have stuff that builds up. That's me right now. What's your favorite thing about having a flatmate? That is an amazing question. So many things, like so many things. It's so nice to come home from like being away and like it still feel like a home and not having to come back and feel like I need to like turn everything back on and uh, like, do you know what I mean? Like open up again because when I would go away I would shut everything down, I would turn everything off, turn the heating off. So I'd come back and it'd be pretty, like a pretty sad empty place which it's not very nice. So yeah, I love just the fact that she is here. I love the fact that the house feels way more like a home. And I love the fact that I have someone to like, you know, talk about my day with and laugh with. It's just, it's really nice. I'm just using the Infallible More Than Concealer in a slightly lighter shade under my eyes. And I'm using this It Cosmetics brush, which I love. The foundation brush that I use is also It Cosmetics. I feel like I don't talk to you about my brushes ever. Oh no, I just rubbed the, the concealer off the spot. I forgot it was there. Oh no. Where did I put my concealer? I'm so confused. Did I put it away? No, I lost it. I don't know why I'm bothering to try and cover this thing on my forehead because you can just see it when I turn to the side. Ew. I'm gonna powder that before we carry on so I don't accidentally knock the concealer off it again like I just did. Okay. And for my under eye powder, of course, I'm gonna be using the Nude Magic BB powder. This is what I tend to travel with so good, never breaks, and yeah, it does the job very well. What's your big goal for 2020 and where do you really want to travel next year? That's an awesome question because the year is like going so fast. I can't believe it's already the end of October. Like it's my, my sister's birthday soon and that signifies at the end of October. And then it's like November, which is Christmas pretty much. So, well, obviously December's Christmas, but people start celebrating. Uh, I'm just using the infallible long wear shaping stick. I think this is zero two. Yes, rosy, rosy nude. Yes, on my cheeks for a bit of blush. I'm loving blush right now. I just think it makes my skin look a bit warmer and I'm here for it. So yeah, my goals, oh my goodness. I want to travel less in 2020. So I said at the end of last year that 2019 for me was gonna be a massive travel year and it really has been, which has been incredible. But I feel like a lot of other things have been put on hold because I've been traveling. I'm using the shaping stick in 210 for some bronze. So yeah, like I still wanna travel because we all know what I'm like. We all know I can't stay in one place for too long. If you haven't watched my channel, I just, have the travel bug, but not even to like go and explore new places because I feel like I've done that a ton. It's more just to be on the move. So next year I feel like I'm still gonna travel, but I feel like I'm gonna go to the places for a longer amount of time. So maybe I'll spend like a chunk of time in like another country, like I love Dubai. I would love to spend some time there. Or maybe Australia because I have some friends there that I would love to actually spend some time with. But I don't know, I feel like yes, for sure I'll be traveling, but I don't necessarily think I'll be traveling to like many new places. Like this year I've hit so many places on my bucket list, which has been like the best, but like I kind of want to spend more time with like the same people that, like next year, just to kind of build up my friendships and my relationships that have kind of maybe suffered a bit this year just because I've not been present. I watched Kylie Jenner do her makeup on like a video the other week and it made me realize how precise she is about things. Like I am such like a lazy, I guess a lazy makeup doer, I don't know. I'm just very carefree and I just kind of go for it and she's like so precise. I'm trying to be a bit more precise with certain things like baking. Can you see? 
I don't know if it makes a difference, but she looks phenomenal all the time and obviously she learns from the best, so I'm taking that as like a hint, you know? But do let me know in the comments where you want to hit on your travel list next year or if you have any holidays booked. I feel like a lot of people will already have their trips next year booked, so yeah. Let me know. Okay, let's do some brows. I'm gonna be using my absolute favorite brow product. This is the Unbeliever Brow. I use shade Brunette, I believe. Could be wrong. Oh no, use Ebony. This is the best brow product ever. I rave about this to anyone that will listen. And yeah, they all go and buy it and they're like, Emily, actually really good. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm kind of over using pomades. I just think that they're a bit much, a bit thick. And this is just, oh gosh, that nearly went flying. This is like so easy to work with and it's super natural if you want, yet if you want to build it up, you really can. I feel like it goes without saying, but like everything I use in this video will be linked down below. There's usually some really good deals on L'Oreal bits, especially the hair care. So yeah, I will make sure I link to the place with the best deals for you. But definitely if you're going to try anything out this video, the no haircut cream is a winner and of course this Unbeliever brow is so good and true match they've reformulated true match recently which is amazing i love it when you know they take note of products that we love and they're like okay what can we do oh no one's ever asked me this what was your reaction to finding out you were going to be having a little sister and <laughs> i have never told this story and there's probably a reason why i was really upset like i was disappointed so we were sat in the kitchen and we had had a takeaway on like a school night, which never happens. So we knew something was going on and genuinely I thought my parents were getting a divorce. This was around the time where like everyone's parents were getting divorces. Like I don't know if you found this growing up, but there was a phase and I tend, like it was around like when you're in primary school still where it felt like everyone's parents were splitting up. And I was so scared that mine were next. Not that like my parents have ever had anything wrong, like I've never heard them argue in my life, but like 10 year old me was like naive and I was very much like, if my friend's parents are splitting up, then my parents might split up and I freaked myself out. So yeah, anyway, we had this like Pizza Hut pizza, we were chilling in the kitchen and I remember vividly like I was sat in this chair and we were like tidying up because we all tidy up as a family, everything in my family is very much like we all muck in. And my mum was like, so um, we have some news. And I was like, oh my gosh, are you spitting up? And my mum burst out laughing. And she was like, no, she's like quite the opposite actually. And my older sister went, you're pregnant, aren't you? And that hadn't even crossed my mind, like not one bit, not at all. And my mum just was like, yeah. And like almost laughing, but like didn't know how we were gonna react. And I think my sister and I were excited. And I remember I slept in her bedroom that night and I just got really upset and I was like, oh, I want to be the baby, I don't want a little sister, or like, I don't want a, a, like, a sibling. Um, and then I got over that very quickly and I grew to love the idea. Obviously she is my absolute everything, so to hear that now you're probably like, Emily, like what? So yeah, I my initial reaction, I was not happy. Um, just to add, I'm going to be using the matte signature eyeliner. but. Obviously it's Sophie, so I got over that very quickly. I was absolutely buzzing, and then by the time she was born, I'd like drawn pictures for her, colored stuff for her, helped decorate her bedroom, and yeah, I was so excited. And then she was born, and she was perfect, and it's amazing. I've gone for the eyeliner look, and I love a good matte liner, but I'm challenging you right now. Try and find a good matte black eyeliner, and I trust me, you won't be able to do it. This one from L'Oreal is like the only one that I found that is truly matte, truly stays on, easy to apply, they're all shiny, and while sometimes that's like what you want, it's not always what I'm down for, so this is like such a winner. Someone just asked, what did the Tesco man think of your face mask? So I answered the door this morning to the Tesco man looking like this, and obviously not on purpose, I just done the face mask, and then he rang me and he was like, hey, I'm outside, and I was like, oh no. So he came up and like he kind of double took and he didn't say anything, and I was like, cool, he's just gonna ignore it. And then he went, what's with the face glitter? I was like, oh, it's a face mask, and he was like, oh. I was like, yeah, it's a bit extra, I know. He was like, prepping for the day ahead, I was like, yeah, something like that. And he was like, oh, sweet, I was like, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so it wasn't as awkward as I expected, but he did mention it, which I was really hoping he wouldn't. I'm gonna pop the Bambi Eye False Lash Mascara on, and Abby asked, what's your favorite thing that we have in America that you don't have in the UK? 
And I say I have like different home comforts for like different countries. There's like different things that I crave when I'm in the US and different things that I crave when I'm in the UK. Like when I'm in the US, I miss things in the UK and when I'm in the UK, I miss things in the US. So I would say a bunch of it is food. Like there's so much good food that I really like in the US that they don't have here. Like the cookies from Bristol Farms are incredible. Uh, just like certain food outlets, like oh, like there's this, this burrito at Tequoia that I love. There is um, like Joe's Pizza, just random stuff that I probably, I guess I have similar things in London. Like I eat tortilla a lot in London, which is like burritos, but it's not the same, like Tequoia is so much healthier. I miss the sun. The sun in like the part of the US that I spend a lot of time is always out. And like, it's just the best atmosphere because everyone's just happy because it's sunny all the time. And then I come back here and I don't see blue skies for like a week and it's like, <sighs> so yeah, the food and the sun. Okay, I'm gonna be using this L'Oreal Karl Lagerfeld highlighter. This is just from their collection they did with him. Dunning, it's like very champagne-y. Super natural, but still glowy, which I love, especially when my skin's being a bit funny texture-wise. I don't want to draw too much attention to it with the highlight, but I still want some on. So someone asked, what age did you move away from home? Did you find it hard? And just before we do that, I'm going to be applying two different lipsticks. I'm using the No Pressure and the No Obstacles from the Ultra Matte Colorish range. So how old was I when I moved out? Did I find it hard? So I was 17, and yeah, I found it hard, but like, only because it takes a lot of getting used to, like I was a very looked after child, so it was like a big change. But like I think once you get your head around things and you realise like doing your laundry is not optional and like you can't go and spend all of your money because you have to buy food, <laughs> like things like that, then I think it becomes easier. But I do think to start off with it is a bit of a shock because it's like at home, like if I like wanted my washing done, I'd put my clothes in my wash basket and they'd be back on my bed the next day, ironed, washed, folded, everything. And all I had to do was hang them up. So that was very different. My mommy looked after me very well. But no, I got used to it very quickly and I think it's just that thing, you just gotta create a routine, get on with it and then you're absolutely fine. So makeup is done. I'm really sorry if the lighting's making it look a bit weird. I feel like you all know that, I mean, my, my makeup, isn't gonna look weird, it's just the light. I'll take a selfie for you at the end of the video on my phone and you can see it in like better lighting. But let's dry my hair. It's like not very damp anymore, but I just wanna make sure it's completely dry before I curl it. Otherwise, you know, I don't wanna damage it. So I'm gonna save your ears and I'll see you in a sec. <laughs> I am gonna curl it, but I'm gonna use my straighteners because that's what I'm really into right now. And I'm gonna do just the really quick curling hack of popping it up in a ponytail and then curling it and then I'll put it down and then I'll use the straighteners to curl the front bits of my hair just so it frames my face. The only thing with curling it like this is you can't pin it, but like I said, I want it relaxed anyway. I do find this super quick though. Most down to earth celebrity you've met, that's a really funny question. So I feel like, like most celebs that I meet or like have met are like so nice or like are just exactly how you'd expect them to be. It's very rare I'd say that you meet someone and they genuinely are like rude or like, do you know what I mean? Or up themselves, whatever. But I'd say the most like normal celebrity that I've met that is like the most down to earth and like you wouldn't even know they're famous or like insanely talented unless they kind of told you or you knew who they were would have to be Lewis Capaldi. He is just like super nice, super chill, super funny. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what else there is to say. He's just like so normal. He's like my age. So it was just like, yeah, obviously he's doing so well. He's so talented, incredibly successful. I think he, didn't he just sell out his arena tour, which is nuts. I can't curl without looking in the mirror and the mirror's just there. Um, but yeah, like literally the most chill guy, super lovely. And I'd say he's probably the most down to earth, like celebrity I've met. He's also hilarious, which, I guess adds to that. And then I'm just pulling, I'm pretty much halfway through now, so I'm just gonna like section it in two and then start from the middle and then kind of throw it at the back, just so I don't get confused with like what I've already curled and what I haven't, because that means it takes longer. Guys, can you let me know in the comments, please, what Netflix shows you are watching right now? Because I have not like had a series to watch in the longest time and I feel like I need one. So if you could let me know what you've been watching, that would be epic. 
because like I can't even oh the last thing I watched was was it called unbelievable I'm pretty sure that was quite hard hitting but I didn't like sit and watch it I like skipped through it it was when I was in Australia so that was good like well I say good I feel like that's the wrong word to describe it it was very hard hitting so yeah, if you have a series that you think I should check out, then please do let me know. Can you let me know if my voice sounds like croaky or something today? I feel like it sounds really low and just croaky and it's just throwing me off a little bit. But curls are done. And I'm like I said, I'm just gonna go in at the front and just do a few to like frame my face just so it looks like I didn't shove it up and do them in a ponytail. And I'm also gonna do the ones underneath just because these ones aren't really done because obviously I did a high pony, so hard to get these bottom bits but I still find it so much quicker doing it this way like my hair it's just super simple waves I just wanted some kind of like volume to it with a little bit of something but I didn't want to turn up with like fully big curls I just feel like it's a bit much but yeah I'm gonna insert a selfie here so you can see how it looks without all the crazy lights but I'm so happy this lip combo is like definitely a new fave I will link everything down below, including the Dream Lengths range. And yeah, I do really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a massive thumbs up and I will see you so very soon. Bye. I'm taking the selfies for you. I don't know what I can see. It's a massive lump on my forehead. <laughs> oh.